Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com. Tonight I'm going to be photographing a dynamic nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia using my new and improved deep sky astrophotography setup. Thanks to some recent upgrades, this is my most advanced kit yet. My goal is to capture the cleanest possible photo of an object that lies 7,000 light years away. Tonight is my final session on this multi-night project on this target and I'm taking you along for the ride. Welcome to the Astro Backyard. Tonight's target is an open star cluster at the center of the Heart Nebula, Malat 15, often referred to as the heart of the heart. There are some intense cosmic clouds sculpted by stellar winds in this area, and that is what I'm hoping to capture in detail. I've photographed this nebula before, but never with a telescope of this size. I'm using the Carbon Star 200 for this project because it helps me maximize the amount of light I can collect in a single night. This reflector telescope has a big aperture of eight inches and a focal ratio of F4. It has a nice mid-range focal length of 800 millimeters to get me in nice and close to my target. The only the only pain with this scope is the regular collimation, which at this point I have down to a fine art. I use my laser collimator on it before I attach the camera, and once I have it dialed in, I just leave it for the entire night. I made a pretty important upgrade to this telescope last week, one that will help me capture consistently sharp images without having to come out and refocus. The EAF, Electronic Autofocuser, is an easy and an affordable mod you can do to almost any scope to add another layer of automation. The process involves removing the stock coarse focus knob and bolting on a simple coupler, bracket, and the motorized focuser itself. I've been so happy with this Newtonian, I finally committed to installing an autofocuser on this rig. Another thing you may have noticed is the new camera I'm using. Okay, it's not new at all, but it does have a new design and some improved specs. The ASI 2600mm Pro is probably the best monochrome dedicated astronomy camera on the market. It has a large APS-C size sensor with an exceptional dynamic range and the perfect pixel size for this system and many others. This model's been around since 2021, but it recently got a bit of a makeover. It has a new matte finish, lower read noise performance, and a faster frame rate. I'm hoping that I'm not putting too much weight on this little autofocuser. It should be fine, but this is a pretty heavy payload here. The camera, filter wheel, seven filters, and this chunky field flattener add a lot of extra weight. And it's all pulling downward because of the way I have it set up for balance. Milot 15 is one of those targets that was just made for narrow band filters and the Hubble palette. I'll use my three nanometer HA, O3, and S2 filters to capture it 240 seconds at a time. Thanks to an incredible stretch of weather we've had this fall here in Ontario, I've already got plenty of subs captured on this target, and tonight is the final round. I haven't looked at anything I've captured yet, so we can share that excitement together a little later on in the video. Rudy turned 11 on October 4th. He's getting up there, and he's doing good, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> yeah, good boy. Can you just come over this way? I'm gonna walk this way then. I'll run everything on my tablet using the ASI Air. I can do everything from inside the house now, and I mean everything. The very last piece of automation for me was that autofocuser. It saves me from having to pop outside to refocus after an inevitable change in temperature. I have the autofocuser set to focus before the imaging plan starts, after a two degree temperature change, and after a meridian flip. I'm telling you right now, if you're like me and you're not used to using an autofocuser, you're gonna feel absolutely useless throughout a night of imaging. When the software finds the target, autofocuses it, and starts capturing it all while I'm in the house, what am I even doing out here? What am I doing out here? Okay, it's almost time to polar align the mount. See, there's something I can do. With a bright, nearly full moon coming up around 8.30 tonight, I'll try to sneak in a few O3 subs to start, and then switch back over to HA and S2. If you notice this secondary rig I've got running over here, that one's shooting the Sol Nebula tonight, the nearest neighbor to the Heart Nebula in Milot 15. Okay, wish me luck.
All right, let's head over to Milot 15. If I open up the Sky Atlas here, I'm gonna go over to the east and over here. There's the Heart Nebula right there. And this is the apple of my eye right here, the um, Malat 15 star cluster inside the heart. So I'm gonna center that and say go to. Now I'm, I'm roughly in focus right now. So that's important for, for plate solving, that you have the correct focal length of your telescope set and that you're pretty well in focus so it can actually analyze the stars in the field. Doing a slight adjustment. And normally before I do this, I focus with a Batonoff mask on a, on a bright star to know that I'm really dialed in, but this will be able to auto-focus right on my target, which is so handy. Okay, target is centered. And right now we're just using the luminance filter. Uh, here's the important part that I didn't have before. So if I go into the top here, EAF, the autofocuser, it gives me the current temperature, 18.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and then some step settings in here, current position, move, go to, I can move it around. But in the autofocus section here, you can see all these toggled green bars here. So before an auto run or each target start, it's gonna autofocus. After switching a filter, it's gonna autofocus. And after a meridian flip, it's gonna autofocus or a two degree temperature change. In the auto run of uh, that imaging plan, I'm just gonna press the start button here and it'll automatically kick in this autofocus routine. The numbers there, so 30,000, 885, 935, those are the different steps, different positions in focus. And they're really, really subtle. Um, just a tiny little change, way more precise than you could ever do manually with your focuser. So I'll probably speed this up so you can see the V curve when it's done. And then after that, the object will be in focus and I'll check in with my first light frame. Okay, here we go, first exposure in S2 with the new system. Here it comes. Oh, baby. Look at that. Okay, let's look at this data I've captured here. These are the stacks of, through each filter. We'll do the H-alpha filter, the hydrogen first. We'll do an auto stretch. Boom, look at that. The, the hydrogen is always a strong signal, a fun filter to assess the data from. Look at that incredible glowing gas from Milot 15. Okay, we'll do the O3 next. And uh, if you can see that kind of strange framing there, that's just the auto crop due to some overlap and some uh, rotation between the subs. So these will all line up together. So there's the O3. Uh, we can see the, uh, the glowing oxygen in the center there. Pretty cool, and, and it looks pretty smooth because uh, I've got over almost 100 subs or so for each filter, four minute subs, so that's a lot of data. I usually don't get to capture over multiple nights like this. And then we'll look at the S2. Now the S2 is really exciting on this target. It's got some intense kind of edges to everything. Boom, look at that. This, the S2 is really the iconic shape of the uh, Milot 15. So those look all really exciting and I won't get into the full process here. It would be a six hour video, but uh, if you want to get more into the processing side of things, I've updated the processing guide this week where I'm going to go through this entire process of building this image so you can see uh, the ins and outs and, and every little step to towards this picture. 
Okay, let's put this together into a quick Hubble palette or show palette image. So I've got all the auto stretches done through each filter. And now I'll just select my red, which is the this one here and green. There we go. This should do it. Boom. So this, there's something about this target and this palette, it's just such an old school kind of Hubble looking image, complete with those magenta stars. If you look at photos from the, uh, I guess mid to late nineties, they had this kind of a look to it, including this target, I think. It just kind of etched in my brain. So there's some ways to uh, fix that up, get rid of those magenta stars and get it a little less green looking, but it's a really spectacular target in this palette. And to me, this is just a sick image <laughs> right now. I love this. But as I said, I'll go through the full process of how I get to my final image that I share at the end of the video in the processing guide. If you're interested in that, that's in the description.